All right, the final uh, thing I wanted to say, I mean, I, I'll continue this conversation, but I mean, one thing I've been planning to say is a reply to the people that have, yeah, actually, maybe this is like my first reply almost. Um, to the people that have said that, uh, okay, I claim that uh, relativism, you know, pretty much always applies. We always need to have a frame of reference in which to judge truth. Now, I don't claim that that's absolute, but people are saying that that's a, an absolute statement. Now, for it to be absolute, it would have to be true in all reference frames. Okay, now, I, I have to say, you know, I'm not claiming that. So if you want to try to prove that it's accurate in all reference points, uh, by all means, uh, go ahead. And that would be a way to prove maybe that it was incoherent. Um, because it claims there is no uh, absolute reference frame that you, that you can access, at least. Now, I judge things, ideas, by how well they work. Now, I'll admit that, and by work, I mean in the real world. Now, I'll admit that the um, it's very difficult to come up with these kinds of examples. Okay, to clarify really quickly, the kind of example I'm talking about is, you know, that you can uh, prove something by example, or you can disprove it. If somebody says, all little boys uh, like frogs, I only need an example of one little boy that doesn't like frogs, and, you know, I've proved it. So when you're claiming that something is absolute and applies in all reference frames, uh, you're claiming, I guess, what? Uh, for all reference frames, there exists a proposition T that is true in all reference frames. And, you know, like the non-contradiction principle is, is offered as such a thing. If I come up with one reference frame where it doesn't apply, then that statement is not true. Now, if you give me a, a logical truism, like the non-contradiction principle, there's always a way to come up with, with those, the, how those things are not absolute. I mean, one is you challenging how well logic applies to the real world. It does not apply perfectly to the real world. Um, and, you know, the platonic logicians out there would love to say, oh, but it will, it will, we'll sort that out, it's going to apply real soon now. And it's just get on with it. I mean, if you ever finish that, uh, great, but I don't think so. I think the universe has infinite number of details. So, you know, you can't just expect the rest of us to accept that on faith. But given that they do have that faith, and that they may turn out true, and in a way I share that belief because I do believe we can increase our logical understanding of the world. We can order our understanding of the world. I just don't think it'll ever end. It can get better and better, but it just can't ever end. There's infinite details. So I, I you know, maybe, you know, I do applaud that. Order the universe, formalize things. Great. But there are also examples within their logical systems. Okay. Um, and so, uh, you know, like the liar's paradox. Now, is there anything like that for relativity? I have to admit, I don't know of any reference frame and I, where that isn't correct. And I've been thinking about why, why isn't that? And I think, you know, it's possible because basically, well, I, I started just, or, you know, I sat down and I've been thinking about, you know, reference frames you know because I think there's something about this idea that that you know it's it's inevitable like you can't have some truisms if they're true by definition I mean maybe the, the basic definition of perception requires a reference frame so that's why we're stuck with reference frames because basically I only have access to my own reference frame when I'm thinking about other people's or other reference frames abstractly you know I'm making a calculation to get from my reference frame you know, to try to abstract that into another reference frame. So I have a way of translate. It's like if my reference frame were the Cartesian coordinate system and somebody else, you know, I recognize somebody else had the a radial coordinate system, I can translate back and forth between these two and I can do kind of a translation, but I never actually escape my own reference frame. I'm always making calculations so that I can sort of pretend that I'm in another reference frame. So I never escape my reference frame. So that makes sense how I can work from one reference frame to another because these reference frames overlap and there's ways to make these translations. But it's not clear that I could ever escape that reference frame and see some universe without reference frames. So that's the sense in which, you know, it's just, even if there was an absolute reference frame, I have no way to get to it and probably no way in my own human language.
to speak about facts with no reference frame and so on. But I do have another argument about why the principle is not absolute, and it's basically because the principle is changing over time. You see, we have a history here. Now, in ancient times, they had an idea of relativity, basically a common sense idea of relativity, uh, you know, perceptive relativity, where if I'm on this side of the house and you're on that side of the house, then, you know, the house looks different. You know, the profile of the house that we see depends on where we're looking at the house from. But it's very easy to translate from that idea into another, and you don't have to lose our common sense idea of the objective material reality. <clears throat> and that was a principle of relativity. But then along comes Galileo with the velocity relativity, you know, at least putting it formally and explicitly, saying that um, your velocity is relative. That, you know, in a way, there's a common sense access to that because we all have traveled in vehicles, and when you're in the vehicle, the people in the other vehicle seem to be moving. You know if you were in that vehicle, the vehicle you're in would be the one that seemed to be moving. But again, that sort of rectifies. and We, we don't really lose our common sense idea of this uh, objective absolute reality that we share because you know, it starts to make sense. We can wrap our head around that. We can say, yeah, we're just using the Earth as our frame of reference because it makes sense. You know, it's just a big object that, you know, we might collide with. You know, it matters if you're moving relative to it. But if we're on another planet, you'd use that other planet. Um, but it is a little weird because when you think about being in space, you know, you ought to be able to know if you're at rest or moving. Um, and it's kind of weird that you're at rest somebody else is moving at you 100 miles an hour, they seem to be at rest in their frame of reference, and you seem to be moving, and you're both equally correct. There's no one that's the ultimate arbiter of that. I mean, our common sense idea of the material reality, we want to have an arbiter of that, know who's really moving and who's not. In fact, the, the physicists, the natural philosophers, the physicists, um, really you know, had a strong urge to find some absolute reference frame. So they looked for the ether. They, somebody thought, hey, photons go are, are waves and they're traveling through a vacuum, so there must be some sort of medium, just like water waves travel through water, you know, sound waves move through air and other matter, you know, waves move through a medium. We'll measure our speed relative to this medium. And this was the ether. But they did experiments and they finally found out that there is no such, you know, medium. Uh, you know, there's a medium in the sense that if a medium is just something that it travels through, but it's not this kind of medium like the ocean, like a body of water that's there and you can tell what has velocity. This ether is at rest with respect to all of us. So that's pretty strange. But still, you know, we don't have to think about that a lot and uh, it's a pretty advanced view of relativity though and it's, you know, changed now. Then along comes Einstein thinking, well, if your velocity is really relative, wait a second, if I light uh, a, uh, a candle, the light that's flying away from me, in front of me, is going at the speed of light. And if I'm moving, it's going at the speed of light. But that doesn't work, because you're going 100 miles an hour away from me, the light's going the speed of light away from me, but it's also going the speed of light away from you, so the light should be going you know, speed of light plus 100 away from me, but it doesn't work like that. And the only way he rec could rectify it was if time itself would be relative time. The flow of time would change so that this could all work out. And that turned out to be true. So we had to change our view of relativity again. So, you know, the ancient uh, the ancient uh, skeptics had a, a good view of relativity, but they wouldn't have imagined, you know, that time itself was relative. But things keep yielding to this principle of relativity, and, uh, you know, it keeps holding. But it also keeps changing, okay? And since it's going to change, that makes it not absolute. You know, our understanding of the reference frames is subject to, to study and therefore to improvement. And then our concepts that we use to explain that reference frame, like the theory of relativity, become more improved. Now, the thing is, I believe there is something fundamental in, our, in this universe around us about that I'm calling relativity. Um, and I believe my concept of relativity is a decent model of it. You know, it's better than no model of it. At least we know it exists and we understand some of its characteristics. 
But the model is not so good that it's going to be unchanging. You know, the idea, this principle or law or whatever you want to call them, you know, the law of relativity, the principle of relativity, whatever, this idea of relativity is still just a model of something going on out in the real world. So we're going to improve that model. So how could I call this idea absolute? You know, I wouldn't. So, yeah, I don't think I'm stuck claiming that, that my principle of relativity is absolute. But I do believe it holds in every reference frame that you will ever be able to come up with or have access to.